Hey folks, uh, my name is Bill McGaldrick. It's good to be back here on um, Norfolk Cable TV. I've been over here a few times with a few different acts I've, I've worked with, uh, but we've come up with a new series here, and this is the very first one. So if it's rough, uh, we'll get better as we go along. Uh, we're going to be doing guitar lessons, really starting from scratch. And again, my name is Bill McGoldrick. I've been living here in town almost uh, 30 years or so. And um, you know, raised my kids here. Grew up in the city, grew up in, in Boston. Started playing guitar uh, really essentially right after the Beatles uh, uh, played on Ed Sullivan. And uh, uh, that was probably 1964, 65 when I first started playing. It was uh, fourth grade really at uh, St. Anthony's uh, Church, St. Anthony's School in Austin, Austin Brighton area. And I think it was Sister Rudolph who started me off, you know, she started, I think my first song was Yellow Bird, you know. I can't believe I, I, I remember that. <laughs> and uh, the Green Beret song, you know. Fighting, fighting, I can't, I can't hear Fighting soldiers on the ground. Something like that, I forget it. But uh, those are the first two tunes, and uh, I've been playing ever since. Uh, graduated from Berklee College of Music in the 70s. Uh, after that, went on the road for a couple of years um, uh, with a uh, show band at that time. And uh, been playing ever since. I do about 100 and 120 gigs a, a year. And uh, I do acoustic, I do electric, I do really, I, I consider myself more like a uh, Swiss Army knife uh, guitar player. And, and that's what I'm hoping to teach folks really how to uh, do whatever you want to do with music. We can get as complex as, as, uh, as you want with this thing or as simple as you want. I'm gonna be using a, a few books uh, and you really don't even you know, need a specific book. What I, I would like, you know, Mel Bay is what I started with, believe it or not, back in the 60s. And the beauty of this kind of book is it, it shows you the kind of chords, you know, and that's what we're going to go over today. My goal today in this particular um, uh, lesson is to go over all of these chords. It's going to be six different chords. Some of these are harder than others, um, but um, to really start off with guitar, uh, I, I have a few other... Um, uh, books I want to uh, talk about too. This is a great book um, uh, written by Bill Levitt who was a teacher of mine at Berkeley in the uh, 70s. Uh, another great book for more advanced players is uh, Tommy Tedesco and these books are a hundred years old. Uh, Tommy was probably the number one LA uh, guitar player in the 70s and 80s and that gets into fairly complex stuff. But we're going to start off with uh, basically how to hold the guitar and you know how to work with the guitar, how to tune a guitar. Guitar is interesting. If, if you take a look at, um, in this particular book here, another thing, if you're serious about guitar, is to maybe pick up an inexpensive keyboard. Because keyboard, keyboards are very visual. You, know, you have black keys, white keys. Whenever you see two keys like this, the, the, the note right next to it is a C. If you take a look at guitar, guitar is like a grid. You know, you have these you know, rows, if you will, or what we call frets. And then you have these columns, which are, are it's kind of like an Excel spreadsheet, really. Um, and these, so it, it, it's, it's sort of abstract, where piano is not abstract. Um, but the first thing you start to learn, really, and we'll show a little bit more of these, is how to sit, how to hold. Um, I do like this nice uh, stool here. Um, this is probably about a 30-inch stool. You can get these anywhere. It's a good way, because uh, you're not encumbered at all. You don't have a... Um, uh, the arms that you would have on, on a chair. And so sitting up, sitting up straight. If you take a look, if you can get a close-up of this, how, how I hold a pick is really be your first finger here, like that, and your thumb. And, and, and that, that's really what you need. And again, you don't need to, uh, you don't have to play with a pick. I am not the best finger guitar player, but a lot of... I don't do it uh, the traditional way. But you can do that too. I do a lot of jazz stuff. And walking bass lines. But 90% of the time, I'm using a pick between my first finger and my thumb. And, and that's how you start off. But uh, you know, traditionally, you, you needed to have a uh, pitch pipe or a uh, uh, a piano to tune your guitar. And that's the first thing you're gonna get. Uh, and let's talk about gu guitars before I even talk about tuning a guitar. Um, 
you can spend as little or as much as you want. This particular model here is from a company by the name of Taylor. It's a uh, San Diego-based uh, California company, and Taylor, this is about the best you can buy. And if you take a, a Katie, you get a good shot of that. That's a Coca Bola rosewood there. Now, this is a four thousand dollar guitar, so I'm not advocating that. You can go on Craigslist and you can get something for fifty dollars, and I've done that before. I bought a real nice Taylor, a uh, smaller Taylor, and, and as this series goes, well, I'll bring in a bunch of my different guitars, because guitars are tools. You have nylon strings, you have 12 strings, you have six strings, you have seal strings, you have electric. This is actually an acoustic guitar, but you can plug it in. As you can see, it has volume and bass and treble as well. I do my own acoustic DAC, and in that act, 90% of the time, I'm using this particular guitar. But getting a guitar, you know, especially for parents who are at home, um, go on Craigslist, come up with a budget, whatever your budget is. I'd suggest $100 in that range. Even if, and if you get something on Craigslist, you can probably get a four or $500 guitar for about $100 used on Craigs. There are a bunch of um, great music stores up here. I tend not to like the, um, the big channel store, uh, the big, uh, what do you call them, uh, chain stores. I like the small stores. We used to have a great one here in Walpole, which has closed, unfortunately, but there's a great one right on Route 9. Um, um, that I recommend highly, you know, is just look up good, good guitar stores in uh, Natick. That's a great place that I recommend because they're good guys and they get a lot of used stuff. And, and if, you, if you get a kid and a kid picks up guitar and, and doesn't, it doesn't work out, you can bring it back and sell it right back to them. So, um, so again, you can go as expensive as this, $4,000. You can, anything below 100 is probably not going to be, because anything lower than that is going to be hard to play. If a guitar is hard to play, kids and adults won't be able to play it, because if you take a look at this a close up here, if you can get a close up here, um, action is when we talk about the height of the string above the frets. Think about it, if it's too high, it's going to kill your fingers and you're never going to be able to play. When you press down, we're going to talk about that uh, when we talk about the chords here. When you press up, you, what you want is, and you want to have a guitar that's reasonable. And um, if we talk about brands, Taylor is, is great. Taylor makes a, uh, what I call a baby Taylor that new costs 500 bucks. I've bought one for $100 on Craigslist and it's small. It's perfect for younger kids or for adults who are just starting because it's smaller and, and sometimes you can play the chords uh, a little bit better. But the instrument is important. It's that for any musical instrument, whether you're playing clarinet, flute, or whatever, you just need a half decent instrument because otherwise you'll get frustrated and you will not get as far as you want to get. So again, tuning. See this thing here? This is a little tuner. This is... Uh, uh, from a company called Snark, and uh, in the old days you used to have to use your ears. That's all you have. You just turn that on. I don't know if you can um, get it. That is an E, and I'm going to show you a little bit more on the, in the book here. Your second, your high second high string is a B, and that's right on. That's right on when it's in the middle. If you if it's flat. That's right on. That's A. And it's good to know the names of the strings. It's hilarious. I've, done, I've taught on and off for a number of years. My undergraduate was uh, music education from Berklee College of Music. And um, I've taught a bunch of guitar players. I've had some heavy duty metal guitar players who could do all that, you know. You know, amazing stuff, but they didn't know the names of the strings. They didn't know the names of the notes. They kind of, maybe they went on YouTube and, and learned some stuff, but again, that's part of what I'm going to be going through on this series here. Um, I'm going to teach you some chords, and we're going to go over the chords, and if that's all you want, great. But I also want to do some music theory, uh, some harmoni uh, harmony theory, and some sight reading. All of that stuff, again, I consider myself a Swiss Army Knife uh, guitar player. I can really go from waltzes to Van Halen. I'm not bragging, it's just after 50 some odd years you get good at, at stuff. And um, it, depending on what your goals are, that's another thing we should talk about. What are your goals? What are you trying to do? Where do you want to go? You know? Right now, today, we're talking basic stuff. How to sit, how to hold the guitar, how to tune, how to buy a guitar. And right now, what I wanted to get into is really the crux of this lesson. Learning some chords. And again, 
you have a single note. Do, re, mi. Do, la, so, fa, mi, re, do. That's, you know, just a C scale. But a chord is when you put, as simple as that, three notes together. C, E, G. And think about it. All the music, back to Mozart, Beethoven, everyone. It's only 12 notes. They only get to use 12 notes. You know, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, G, uh, F sharp, uh, G, uh, G sharp, A, B, uh, A sharp, B, C. Those are the 12 notes here. But in order to make a chord, you have to put three notes together. Do, mi, so, do, mi, so, do, mi, so, do, so, mi, do. You know, you, you do, a, the, a, the, a, the, a, the, you know, that, that all has a purpose, and I use that to this day. Uh, it's what we call solfege or sight, um, sight singing. But really, the first chord you should learn is a C chord. It's the chord of, it's the C is the key of the people's key, the people's key of C. And it's a C, which is the one, we'll get into harmony later on. And the third, three, E, G, C. And so it's the third finger. Again, these are frets, and we're only going to stay down here in that first three frets right now. Six strings, three frets. I know it sounds confusing, but just focus on the first thing. And uh, again, it's one thing to learn the fingering. Third, um, third finger, uh, fifth string is a C. And it's, you just got to uh, trust me on that. And we'll go into... You know, a little bit of the, uh, you know, how you figure out the names of the notes and all that sort of stuff. But third finger, and, and we'll show the, uh, in, the, uh, in the book exactly what this third finger, fifth fret, and you've got to hold straight down. If you go sideways, it's not going to work. Straight down, because you want to have a clear sound. Now, this, that's your third finger. Again, one, two, three, four, and thumb. The thumb comes in the handy at times, too. But for the most part, for the first year you're doing this, you're not using your thumb for chords at all. So C, and then the second finger, the second finger, second fret of the fourth string. Again, this is, uh, let's go over the strings again. E, is, uh, and you just got to memorize this, or maybe we'll show a graphic on it, but E is the bottom. A is the fifth string. So sixth string is E. E is an echo. A is an alpha. That's your second one. D is in Delta. G is in Golf. B is in Bravo. And then E, the top and the bottom are different octaves. Do, 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 do. But for this chord, and, and we'll get, uh, hopefully in this time, we'll get through all the chords that I wanted to get through today. Because this is harder than it looks. You know, because, and again, you don't want to, um, and I'll, I'll show in the book, uh, we, we will X. I don't want you playing that sixth string on this. That's, I'm using the thumb there to, to, to mute that string because it'll sound ugly. If you have that E in the bottom, that's not going to be good. So, third finger, third fret, straight down. And I know it's hard. This is steel. So you, after a while, you know, I don't know, Kate, if you can get a, a close-up of my fingers. It's uh, many, many years. My, the tops of my fingers are pretty strong. So, and they will get strong as you do this. So, you just practice. Third finger, third fret, um, fifth string. Get that? Third, third, fifth. Second finger, second fret, and pressing down hard, and then open on the third string. That note is a G. And the top note is a C, and you can have that high E open too. That's a C chord. What's gonna happen when you first start this at home is it's gonna be like, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't. You know, I'm also a runner, I'm also a pilot, I have my commercial pilot's license, and um, music is, uh, you know, like anything in life, you just have to work hard at it, if you want. You know, if you get frustrated, then it's the same with running, same with flying, you're just, you're just gonna drop it. You know? And I would say, in general, Maybe one out of 50 people stick with guitar because it's hard. It's very physical. If you take a piano, you can do a C. And back to this uh, piano graphic here. 
you know, that note there is a C, and then the next one's a D. Skip that. You go to that E and a G. You can just, anyone can play that immediately. On guitar, it's, it's, it's a little different, and it's, it's a lot harder in some ways, you know? And it's, again, it's abstract. It's, it's not visual, so it's, um, it's not an easy thing. So that's that first. Mother Mary come to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be, let it be, let it be, let it see, there will be an answer, let it see. Let's let it be by the Beatles. But again, that's just the first chord, and I know it's hard, and um, I don't have any other suggestions other you just gotta keep on doing it. Just keep on putting your fingers down on that chord. And in this book here, um, the next chord is an F chord, which is by far the hardest chord. So I'm gonna skip it today. I'm gonna skip it today and go right to uh, the G chord. And again, when I just started playing um, that C chord, and played a bunch of different chords together. F. That's how, that's, a, that's how songs are, are, are created. You know, it's interesting. The Beatles did not read music at all. They just kind of sat around and they kind of put chords together. And oftentimes they put chords together that didn't fit together, theoretically. But they sounded great, you know? Like a... I'm forgetting uh, uh, what tune that is, but um, you know, going to G to a D to an F was kind of interesting, and they would do that all the time, McCartney and Paul uh, and uh, John Lennon. But again, if all you want to do is put some chords together and sing some songs, we're going to be able to help you with this series, uh, I, I believe. Um, so I'm going to go right from the C chord again, and we'll show some video, some close-up graphics of what this is again. Because again, if you could just take a look at this, in a, uh, here are the strings, five strings across here. The third finger, third fret, second finger, second fret, first finger, first fret. That's what we're talking about here in the C. And again, coming straight down, because if you come from the side, it's, it's not gonna ring. You need it to ring. And that's the hard part. It's just putting those fingers down. And when you see a new guitar player like this, you know, and they're like, especially younger kids, that's why the smaller, uh, the baby guitars, and Martin makes them, Taylor, a bunch of people make them. But just practice that. You know, I mean, if you can get in your first hour this chord and a G chord, you're doing well. So let's go into the G chord here. Okay, the G chord, we're gonna use, um, we're gonna use the sixth string. Again, in general, first fret, is handled by the first finger. Anything to go with the second fret is the uh, second finger. And the third uh, fret is the um, uh, third finger in general. You know, sometimes like this G chord, we need to use um, two fingers on that third fret. But in general, that's a chromatic scale. And um, uh, for the fourth um, fret, I use the fourth finger and that's, the things you learn initially with guitar are what are going to help you or hamper you or hurt you down the road. And if you see, one of the key things that guitar plays, for whatever reason, I grew up very traditionally, I, uh, I, I started play, playing guitar and reading music. So it's something that mostly, and I will, we'll talk, we'll get into that a little bit here. But a lot of guitar players can't use their fourth finger. <laughs> You need that fourth finger. A lot of rock guitar players, they do. They play a rock scale. See, I'm used to using my fourth finger. Um, you need that fourth finger, big time. Um, and when people originally learn how to play this G chord, they usually, and I'm not gonna even show you the incorrect way that I always see people playing. I want to do it the uh, correct way, which is third finger, third fret, one, two, three. Third finger, third fret, second finger, second fret. That's a G, that's a B. The next three notes are freebies because they're open, you don't have to worry about them. But you really wanna get that third fret, 
fourth finger. That's a G chord, and it can't be like this, right guys? It can't be like that because uh, otherwise you're just going to be, you're not gonna get a clear sound. So what you want, that's what I wanna see. And the key today, and that's what really, that's all, we're not gonna go too much into any of the other chords because it just gets confusing because what you need to do if you're gonna go over this lesson and, and really practice uh, with this is to go from C to G. Yeah, it's interesting. If you can get a, a close-up shot of this, I play very, very hard. And the right hand is where music is made. This is when you're starting. Yeah, you know, you gotta get that down. It's the rhythm. So I play hard, so I beat beat this uh, pretty bad, this very expensive guitar. But it's it's a it's great for that song. That's a rock riff, by the way. So the right hand is key, but we're not really focusing on the right hand today. What we're focusing on are the basics. Learning the strings, E, A, fifth, D, fourth, G, third, B, second, E. That's what we're talking about here. And then tuning. And we, I used a tuner, and that's great. But let's quickly go over this right here. Traditionally, how it, we, as long as you get that E, you can go up to the fifth fret. That's an A. The next note is they got to match, they got to sound right. Go to also here, D. This is the traditional way how I grew up in the 60s learning, it was all by ear. We didn't have these cool little machines. Uh, then the, um, uh, for the next one, this is a G, tuning the G string. You hear that? It pretty much matches it. Now on this, there's a little caveat here. Um, I won't get into why, but you got to go down to the fourth, fourth fret for that. That note is a B. And then here, again, that's really how you traditionally um, tune a guitar. But let's go back to our chords again. C. And what I would do, and I, I, I you know, I mean, I did play a lot of sports when I was a kid, but right when the, after the Beatles, I was focused on music. I would spend all day Saturday, I'm talking eight, nine, ten hours, just doing this. And that's all I would want you guys to do today. Again, let's recap where we are. Um, get a good guitar. Figure out your budget and start with something. And the guitars I started with in the 60s were awful. Um, they're made in Japan and they, believe me, in Japan, uh, Japanese guitars right now are, are amazing. But back in the 60s, they were not. And it was really, really hard, but I wanted it more than anything. I wanted to be John Paul Ringo George. So I, I you know, I, I did that, you know, um, learning songs with uh, Sister Rudolph was her name, uh, my first uh, guitar teacher back then. Um, get a good guitar, figure out a budget, um, get a book, you know. Mel Bay's great, there are millions of them out there. Um, you know, uh, and uh, you know, I'll be using that for the, this video series and the Bill Levitt book as well. Bill Levitt book, we're gonna go over harmony and we're gonna get a little bit more advanced uh, things there. And reading, reading is huge. Um, so, and the names of the strings, E, A, D. Again, E is the bottom one and the top one. That's easy, bottom and top. Then A for the fifth string. Uh, D for the uh, fourth string, G uh, for the third string, B for the uh, second string, and then E again for the high. And there's no substitute. You got to memorize stuff. You just got, uh, you know, it's it's just just part of it. Um, and and really, for the first three four months, you know, whether you're a 70 year old adult and you're just picking this up, and there are people I've taught, you know, up oh, well over 50, 60, 70 years old, they say, you know, I always want to play guitar. Okay, so here we are. We can do that. We have the C chord. Third finger, third fret. I know this is repetitive, but it's just the nature. And again, we will show the videos and the, the graphics of, of these uh, chords um, and how to play them. But again, nothing flat, straight. 
Come straight down. Third fret, fifth, uh, um, third fret, fifth string. Um, second fret, fourth string. Open G. A lot of times people will muffle it. You can't do that because you're not going to get the fall. And it takes a while. It takes one. It might take a month before you can get one uh, chord that'll ring out like that. But then the next one, the key about this, it's one thing to learn one chord, and what you see are bring in a guitar player. Now they gotta change the G, it's like. You wanna be able to. That's what you want. So let me just, uh, I'll, I'll finish with a, a great uh, Beatles song here. Um, of course I forget the name of it. You know, I'll remember it after I play it. That's it. Thank you. And come back next time.